Hi everyone, Sarah here. Today I'm going to share everything about the final gear that I ended the Appalachian Trail with during my southbound journey. In the description below, I will add a link to my initial gear list and both the video and the actual lighter pack list and a second lighter pack list outlining the final gear that I had so you can compare the two side by side. Overall, I kept my big three about the same for most of the journey, um, but I did make some changes along the way. My pack. I carried the Gossamer Gear Kumo the entire trail. I did start without the hip belts, um, just because I've been used to hiking without hip belts. Previous to the Gossamer Gear pack, I had made a railway pack from the railway kit, uh, which does not have a hip belt attachment. Um, so I've just been used to it for the past few years. However, about a month in, I realized that I wanted extra space for snacks. So I did have the hip belt sent to me and I could fit about four snacks, <laughs> four bars um, between the two pockets. However, the hip belt was not functional for me just because it was slightly too big. Um, yeah, so it wasn't really functional. It was only there for snacks. <laughs> Eventually I did buy a fanny pack. So I went with the Adam the Rue and it's a two liter pack. Um, it was really great. I could fit about a half day's worth of food, if not a little more, uh, as well as my external battery. So I could charge my phone or my headlamp and there were was also a pocket in the front that I could easily slip my phone in and out of, which also solved the problem of my phone turning on in my shoulder pocket. Eventually, I did have my pack cover sent to me as well. Um, I do have an internal bag liner and I kept all of my sleeping gear in that bag. So that way when it did rain, hopefully my sleeping gear stayed dry. Um, however, during some of the larger rainstorms, I realized that the water resistance was not enough in the pack and was definitely seeping through. So I just wanted to make sure that none of my gear got soaked. So I did have the pack cover as well. My sleep system, I had the Loco Libre 10 degree quilt and I opted for extra stuffing in the foot box to keep my feet warm and not carry extra socks. Um, this bag was way too warm at the beginning of the trail, but by the middle and end, it was fantastic. Um, so I think if I were to do it again, I would opt for a lighter quilt for the summer portion and then send my 10 degree quilt ahead for the fall. Um, so for me, about the end of Pennsylvania, beginning of Virginia, I would have sent my quilt, my 10 degree quilt to myself. Yeah, if I were to do it differently, maybe a 30 degree quilt. I generally sleep cold. There were folks that had a 40 degree quilt, um, and I think maybe that would have been too cold. <laughs> when I got to Waynesboro, I did have my fleece bag liner sent to me, and this adds theoretically about 15 degrees of warmth. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how that's actually measured or if it does, but between the bag liner, my quilt, and my thermals, I was very, very, very comfortable when it was below freezing. My Thermarest Neo Air mattress is still going, uh, still zero holes in this mattress. If you've been with me from the beginning, you may recall that I've had this air mattress for a long time. I took it on the Pacific Crest Trail with me and many other adventures in between. Um, yeah, it is still going. However, I did notice that it was taking a lot longer to inflate and it became a chore that I absolutely dreaded by the end of the trail. So much so that I did debate sleeping on the one eighth inch foam that I was carrying with me. Um, yeah, it was just, 
it took a lot of energy and effort to inflate. And I think it is time to retire that air mattress. Um, as sad as that makes me, <laughs> it, I think it's time to upgrade <laughs> my shelter. So I carried the Nemo Hornet one person for most of the trail. Um, on day 44, I did get a tear in it, um, right at a major stress point and just some of the webbing tore away. Um, I continued to use it like this and it was fine. And I know you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, day 44, that tent's not worth it. Um, I have owned this thing for a couple of years and have definitely gotten a lot of use out of it. <laughs> so yeah, no worries. I'm sure that they've also updated the tent, uh, hopefully reinforced those stress points as well. However, by the end of the trail, I was mostly sleeping in shelters and looking ahead, I figured out how I could just shelter hop for the rest of the journey. So I sent my tent home and got my tarp sent to me just as a backup. Uh, I only had to set up my tarp once while on trail and yeah, worked out fine. <laughs> my clothing. This is an area that I changed a lot. <laughs> if I were to do it again, I would have started out with different clothes. Um, I started out with a mountain hardware t-shirt and a pair of bike length spandex shorts. And I thought those shorts would be a great idea because it was humid and I was worried about chafing on my inner thighs. Usually I wear running shorts while hiking and backpacking and I don't know why I second guessed myself on this. Um, those shorts were absolutely miserable. Um, don't do it. Just don't do it. You will hate yourself. <laughs> Women out there. I know chub rubs a real thing, but man, peeling those wet, sweaty shorts off to go to the bathroom, to go to sleep at night, to put them back on in the morning. Oh, it was gross. Just don't do it. Get all of <laughs> the the glide the glide that you can get <laughs> for your legs because it is not worth wearing spandex shorts. Um, so on day thirty one, when I was in North Woodstock, I did buy a pair of running shorts and I found a super light tank top that actually dried um, at a secondhand store. So I should have started in those. Um, but I was very comfortable in them for the rest of the trail. The shorts were the Patagonia Striders. Um, they were fantastic. I will definitely continue wearing them. There are pockets all over the waistband. They dried very quickly, um, especially during some of the large rainstorms. Um, yeah, overall, I was very happy with those. Once I got to Waynesboro and the weather was changing, so just before getting to Waynesboro and going through the Shenandoahs are, was when Hurricane Ian, wind and rain were starting to hit and the temperatures were dropping and it was wet. So when I got into Waynesboro, I went into the gear shop there and I bought a pair of tights that I could hike in and it would be fine if it was raining. Um, I wanted to keep my thermal leggings dry in my pack. So I did buy the Patagonia pa Pack It Out tights. Um, they were very warm. Um, again, Patagonia, just because they were the only tights that this gear shop had that fit me. So <laughs> those are the ones that I went with. They had two brands and that was, that was the one I got. Um, and I did wear them off and on throughout the rest of my southbound journey. And they were particularly nice to have in town as town clothes. So yeah, I also bought a second <laughs> long sleeve fleece. So I had my long sleeve base layer and then I bought this fleece that had a hood and it fully zipped. Um, it was fantastic and I ended up living in it for the rest of the trail. That is the blue rab sweater that I had 
um, in the rest of my videos. I also swapped out my gloves for a warmer pair. I did just start with the glove liner, which I never used. I shouldn't have packed those to begin with. Um, also in Waynesboro, I figured it was getting much colder and I sent home my camp shoes. So I did have a pair of Luna sandals. So I sent those home and just didn't have camp shoes for the rest of the trail. My rain jacket. Um, so I started with the Marmot Essence rain jacket, another piece of gear that I've owned for a very long time. I did try to refresh it before leaving. So I washed it in Nick Wax, tried to, yeah, update the, the water repellency, but uh, that didn't really work. And the inside liner started shredding away. So whenever it rained, I was instantly soaked. Um, it just wasn't working anymore. It was still fine for wind, but not for rain. So when I got into Roanoke, there was a secondhand gear store and they had a outdoor research helium jacket. So I bought that and I used that for the rest of the journey and that worked out well. Socks, I only went through four pairs of socks for this entire journey. So I started out with three and one of them got <laughs> too many holes. So I threw those away and I replaced them so that I still had three pairs of socks in my bag. And just before the end of Virginia, I got rid of a second pair of socks. So I ended with two pair in my pack. So one that I was wearing throughout the day and one that was in my pack. Um, yeah, which is much different than my Pacific Crest Trail journey. And I think that's just due to the sand that you're walking through in the desert, just shredding your socks apart, which was not the case on the Appalachian Trail. Shoes. <laughs> so I went through four-ish pairs of shoes. Um, I started with the Ultra Superior Fives and they already had a couple hundred miles on them from me hiking around here in Arizona. And a couple years ago, I did hoard a lot of shoes that I love um, because Ultra is always changing. So whenever they're on sale, I try to snag a couple extra pairs. Uh, so when I got into New Hampshire, I swapped my superiors for a pair of Ultra Lone Peak 4s. So this is a much older model um but something that i had in my closet and used those for about 500 miles and then switched to the ultra king mountain 1.5s uh just before getting into pennsylvania and i chose this these uh because there is a thick rock plate in them uh and it makes going over rocks so easy <laughs> And they're also just really, really comfortable to wear for me. I love these shoes. They are my favorite pair of shoes ever, and they no longer make them. So <laughs> if you have a pair of King Mountains, either the ones or the 1.5s in seven and a half or eight, please send them my way. I will <laughs> buy all of them. <laughs> um, yeah. They're great shoes. I got about 900 miles out of them. Uh, the sole was still looking pretty decent. They were getting so uncomfortable, even after swapping out the insole, um, just the structure of the shoe was starting to fall apart. So my final plan was to buy something from a local store. Um, the first store I ran into was in Marion and they only sold Topos, which is a brand of shoe that a lot of folks that loved Ultra have gone to Topos. And so I went for it and I bought these Topos that proved to be very uncomfortable for me. Um, the side wall was way too high for me and was grinding into my ankle, so much so that my ankle was bruising and swelling in the three or four days that I used them. So as soon as I got into Damascus, I went into the outdoor store there and they did have the Ultra Lone Peak 6s, so I switched to those and that's what I finished the trail in. Um, the Topos, I only put like 65 miles on those shoes um, 
yeah, and I was not happy with them. But the Ultra, the Lone Peak 6s have been fine. Um, I continue to wear them and run in them now that I am home. Uh, and they have still held up, so yeah. Other things, um, I did buy a Rovi Vox flashlight that clips to my visor or to a hat. Um, I bought this because I was doing a lot of night hiking. The days were getting much shorter on both ends. So you wake up starting in the dark and you finish your hike in the dark. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that I had a backup back, backup flashlight. So my Night core got about five hours on the setting that I used it most often um, on a single charge. And so, yeah, just in case I was planning on a long night hike, I got this. Other things, um, I did buy a Rovi Vox flashlight that clips to my visor or to a hat. Um, I bought this because I was doing a lot of night hiking the days were getting much shorter on both ends. So you wake up starting in the dark and you finish your hike in the dark. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that I had a backup back, backup flashlight. So my night core got about five hours on the setting that I used it most often um, on a single charge. And so, yeah, just in case I was planning on a long night hike, I got this. And yeah, the rest was just gear that I ditched. <laughs> so early on, I sent home my tripod for my phone. I just wasn't using it. I had no interest in setting up for great shots. Um, I'm not a photographer and I wasn't going to learn that skill on this trail. So <laughs> gave up on that early. Um, I also got rid of most of my emergency and blister kit. Um, just after a while, you realize that you don't need any of it. So I got rid of most of it. And I did ditch most of my food bag hang system. So at one point, I did get cord caught in a few branches and just had to cut it down. So I got rid of the rest of it. Um, and I think that's that for my final gear. Again, there are links below to my initial gear vlog as well as the list and the final gear list so you can compare the two side by side. Um, yeah, if you have other questions, feel free to comment below and I will try to respond. And yeah, I'll see y'all in the next video.